functions is you want to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. That's the first step. So what I would do is I would go ahead and factor this so we get x minus 3 times x plus 2 over x plus 2 times x minus 1. Okay, so you can see this is 2x, negative 1x, it adds up to the middle term 1x. You can FOIL it, make sure you factored it correctly, but what you'll notice is that the x plus 2 factor cancels in the numerator and denominator. Now normally we, you know, we don't want the denominator equal to 0 because that's undefined, and we would get a vertical asymptote normally, but when the factor and the numerator and denominator cancel like this, you don't get a vertical asymptote, you actually get a removable discontinuity. It's actually like a hole in the graph. Now if you graph it in your graphing calculator, you might not see that hole because it's infinitely small. It's just like a little pixel, right? So what we're going to do, this graph is actually going to behave like y equals x minus 3 divided by x minus 1, except for it's going to have that little hole in the graph. Now, how do you locate where the hole is? Well, you can see that negative 2 is going to make this uh, equal to 0 or undefined. If you take negative 2 and put it into what's left over, okay, after you cancel those factors out, you get negative 2 minus 3 over negative 2 minus 1, which is negative 5 over negative 3, which is a positive 5 thirds. So the location of our hole is negative 2, 5 thirds, which is like 1 and 2 thirds. It's about right there, okay? Let's see if I can make it a little bit more accurate, right about there, okay? Now the next thing, we're just going to proceed and graph this entire rational function. You're going to want to look at the highest degree term in the numerator, which is x squared, and the highest degree term in the denominator. Now as x gets larger and larger, these terms are more influential on the equation than these terms are. So we can cover those up temporarily and just realize that the graph's going to behave as x gets really large, like x squared over x squared. Because they're growing at the same rate, we look at the ratio of the coefficients. That's 1 over 1. So y equals 1 is going to be our horizontal asymptote. So there we go. There's our horizontal asymptote, like so. Okay, so then the next thing is we're going to look at the vertical asymptotes, and we know that we can't divide by 0, so that means x can't equal 1. We're having a uh, vertical asymptote at x equals 1, which is right here. So I'm going to draw that in. That's just a dotted, invisible line like so. Now the next thing is we're going to analyze the x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So I like just to make a little table like this. Set x to 0 to find the y-intercept, set y to 0 to find the x-intercept. Keep it simple, right? So if you put 0 in for x, you can see these terms are going to cancel out and we get negative 6 over negative 2, which is positive 3. So the y-intercept here is going to be 1, 2, 3 right there. Okay, and if we set y to 0, okay, now follow me on this one. Sometimes students get a little bit confused by this. If you set y to 0, the only way that y will be 0 is if the numerator is 0. Because if the numerator is 0 and the denominator is not 0, that fraction is equal to 0. So by setting the top to 0, you can see that x equals 3 is going to be our x-intercept, so that's 1, 2, 3. All right, now it looks like the graph's coming together. The only thing I would do now is maybe take a look at a few points as you approach the vertical asymptote from the left and from the right. So what we can do is we can do what's called sign analysis. I'm going to pick a point like 0.9, just a little shy of uh, x equals 1. And if I put 0.9 into this factored form here, 0.9 minus 3 gives us a negative and 0.9 minus 1 gives us a negative, and a negative divided by negative is a positive, so that tells us this graph is going up towards positive infinity, which you could probably tell already from these points that we have right here, but just to show you a little bit more. And then over here, let's see, when you approach the vertical asymptote from the right side, let's say we put in 1.1, that's going to give you 1.1 minus 3 is a negative, 1.1 minus 1 is a positive, a negative divided by positive is a negative, which tells you as you're approaching this vertical asymptote, the graph's going down, 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 so basically the graph's going to look something like that.